Deputy Prime Minister Gan Kim Yong says Singapore and India are keen to develop a semiconductor ecosystem to boost diversification and resilience. This includes a training centre in maintenance, repair and overhaul. Mr Gan made the point in the New Delhi. He also stressed that such partnerships are crucial to weather global economic uncertainties. We have to explore opportunities and possibilities of uh, extending and expanding our supply chains so as to make sure that our supply chains are more resilient, more robust and uh, uh, less uh, uh, susceptible to disruption. And uh, this will also give us more uh, options and more alternatives in terms of where we source our components from and where we sell our products to. Leaders from both sides met in New Delhi for the third India-Singapore Ministerial Roundtable. They are deepening ties in six areas. These include healthcare, advanced manufacturing and sustainability. Officials discussed plans for a sustainability-focused industrial park in Rajasthan, collaboration on green energy and sharing expertise on nuclear safety standards. At a media briefing, Mr. Ghana said Singapore will work with India to enhance nurse training to meet the island state's health care needs. He also led a delegation on Wednesday to call on Indian President Dribadi Murmu. Mr. Ghana said Singapore is committed to making the partnership work for both sides. If we just simply try to uh, uh, duplicate what we do in Singapore, in India, it may not work. And these are the challenges. So we need to work very closely with our Indian counterparts to make sure that even as we uh, invest and in, in, in helping uh, India to uh, in, uh, develop their skills training program, we need to take into account their environment, their needs and their requirements so that uh, what we do will really be helpful uh, uh, to them rather than to just uh, import wholesale what we have from Singapore to India. To explain uh, what form this semiconductor partnership might take, we have with us Dr. Kati Nacharpan, a research fellow at the Institute of South Asian Studies at NUS. Kati, always good to have you. Thanks for joining us. Tell us, why is this semiconductor ecosystem between Singapore and India important? Well, there are several reasons. Um, we live in a geopolitically difficult time right now. There are a lot of question marks over uh, the Taiwan Straits, uh, whether Taiwan can continue to supply the levels of semiconductors that it has been. Uh, and the, and the, the major semiconductor supply chain is in Northeast Asia. Mm. And as that region becomes more geopolitically volatile, uh, other countries have to prepare themselves um, in terms of risk. And they need other options to get the semiconductor supplies that they need. So in that context, uh, Singapore and India uh, emerges natural partners in this area. Some, uh, Singapore has a viable um, and well-developed semiconductor ecosystem over, over 20, 30 years. India is in just in the beginning stages of developing its ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that can happen in terms of technology sharing, transfer. Uh, Singapore can invest and, and build out some of the capabilities in India such that both can produce the semiconductors that are required yeah. for the modern economy, which yeah. now hinges on AI, on EVs, on telecom, all of which require more and more chips. That's right. Then this partnership, you know, how can it help both countries weather you know, the current global economic uncertainties? Well, it's about resilience. As I mentioned, um, supply chains are under immense risk. Yeah. Uh, a lot of countries are looking for diversification. And a lot of countries in Asia are looking for other options than just Northeast Asia. So if you look at India, India is in South Asia, uh, and Singapore is in Southeast Asia. So a lot of countries in South and Southeast Asia need an alternative to the current semiconductor supply chain, which is dominated by Taiwan, Japan, and South Korea. Mm. And a lot of, uh, a lot of question marks are also remain about the U.S. and China. Mm. The U.S. is now tariffing semiconductors. Uh, there are a lot of question marks over um, China as well. So in this context where there are, there's, as I mentioned, geopolitical difficulties, uh, economic troubles, uh, and as the economy modernizes to become a much more digital one that's centered on AI, mm. which will require more chips, you need alternate venues of production. Uh, to weather any such economic storms that do come. 
and you need more and more chips and more and more production centers to produce those chips right. across Asia. Earlier you said Singapore and India are natural partners, yeah. right, to, uh, to come together in this ecosystem. So what do you think are the unique strengths that each, you know, Singapore and India bring to the table to build this uh, ecosystem? Well, as I mentioned, Singapore has developed a sophisticated, world-class semiconductor manufacturing ecosystem. A lot of the major companies like uh, Micron, Infineon, yeah. are all based here. Yeah. Uh, they all have deep research and development capabilities. Yeah. Uh, the Singapore government works closely with the semiconductor industry, so mm -hmm. there's a partnership there. Yeah. Uh, and India has talent. India has lots and lots of engineering talent. And India has a lot of structural advantages in this space. There's a lot of land in India. India has the, the water, the other, uh, the other physical assets mm -hmm. that are necessary to build out fabs. And, and, and Singapore doesn't have space. Mm -hmm. So there are natural advantages and complementarities here for both countries. Mm -hmm. And if they work together, they can not just supply more chips for themselves, mm -hmm. but for the entire region. Mm -hmm. So that's all the good stuff, right, Kartik? Let's yeah. take a look at the challenges. Yeah. What are the hurdles that both Singapore and India will face uh, in making this partnership work and to come together? Well, one big challenge is talent. And um, there's a shortage of talent in the semiconductor space right now. Uh, just to give you an example, it takes about uh, five to 10 years to train a highly competent um, professional in the semiconductor space. So from university, to achieving competence yeah. through different kinds of programs and skills, it takes about 10 years. So you need to train lots and lots of engineers over time mm -hmm. to sustain this ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, the demand for chips will just continue to rise and the demand for talent will continue to rise. And that's why between India and Singapore, there's a heavy emphasis on skills and on training mm -hmm. and on ensuring that Singapore can support India in training the engineers and the talent that's required mm -hmm. to build out this ecosystem in India that can then support not just Singapore semiconductor companies, but produce more chips for the entire region. Wow, oh, all right. And this partnership, can it also help create new markets and opportunities for businesses in Singapore? Absolutely. I think, as I mentioned, there's a lot of uh, semiconductor expertise in Singapore. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's not just the big firms. There are a lot of SMEs who are involved in this highly sophisticated ecosystem, the supply chain. Uh, and all of them will find more and more opportunities as India develops its own semiconductor ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, and as I mentioned, this is not just a bilateral mm -hmm. partnership. If India and Singapore are able to design and ultimately deliver a a, a semiconductor supply chain, a node that can become an alternative to Northeast Asia, mm -hmm. then the broader Indo-Pacific can benefit as a whole. And that means producing more chips for a lot of countries in South and Southeast Asia as well. All right. Kathy, thanks for the, uh, those insights. Always good to have you on board. And that was Dr. Kartik Nachiapan there from the Institute of South Asian Studies at NUS.